you may be better off driving that thing into a ditch. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 ugliest cars of all time. Before we begin, we publish new videos every day, so be sure to subscribe for more great content. For this list, it's all about the aesthetics, so even if a car performs or sells well, we don't care. Our sole concern today is just how painful the vehicle is to look at. Don't say we didn't warn you. But what they've got here is a very distinctive, kind of a compact, sporty crossover thing. Number 10, AMC Gremlin. We're not sure who thought it was a good idea to name this car a Gremlin, but you know what? It's pretty damn accurate. The two-door subcompact is as beautiful as its namesake. In production from 1970 to 1978, the Gremlin featured a similar body to the AMC Hornet, and it boasted, if you can call it that, a nearly vertical hatchback tail. The Gremlin was designed to compete with fuel-efficient European and Japanese offerings, but it failed to live up to those global standards. With cars like the Gremlin, it's no surprise AMC couldn't hang in with the big auto manufacturers. It's a good quality American-made car for the period, it's just not the sexiest thing ever. Number 9, Tata Magic Iris. If only they'd spent as much time on the design as they did on the name. While the car manufacturer based out of India didn't exactly strike gold with the Tata Nano, its real creme de la caca is the Magic Iris. Entering production in 2010, and still in production as of 2017. This three-door, four to five-seater microvan looks like a toy kindergartners would run around playing with, not a car you'd actually drive. But it does have an interesting purpose. Within the cramped streets of Indian cities, the tiny Magic Iris is designed to compete with auto rickshaws. It's a niche market. The new Magic Iris from Tata Motors, the international ride for the new India. Number eight, Chrysler PT Cruiser. It's hard to define exactly what kind of car the PT Cruiser really is. In some ways, it resembles your standard four-door car, while in other ways, it looks like an SUV. If you look at it just right, you may also think it looks like the Monopoly car, or at least a malformed one. A Mo Blobbly car, if you will. You, me, Dwight are going to jump in my PT Cruiser. We are going to crush this sale. It was in a category all of its own, but fortunately, it was one that didn't stick around. The five-door hatchback was produced for 10 years, halting in 2010, and actually had surprisingly decent sales throughout its run. But of course, the benefit of driving a PT Cruiser is it's one less PT Cruiser you have to look at on the road. But he is allowed to festoon the parking space outside his house with a hideous Chrysler PT Cruiser. Number seven, Suzuki X90. So many of the cars on this list just don't make any sense, and were likely the products of designers trying to create the next big thing. The Suzuki X90 has to be an example of that, because there's no other explanation for its existence. Between 1995 and 1997, Suzuki produced the fusion of a car, a truck, and despair. With a truck-like nose, the profile of a Fisher-Price pedal car, and the abbreviated rear end of an SUV, the X90 failed to carve out a desirable identity. We would give them credit for trying, but it's not clear they actually were. Number 6, Pontiac Transport. The Pontiac Transport has the best nickname on this list by far. The Dustbuster. The similarities go deeper than just a nickname, though, because like a Dustbuster, this confused attempt at a minivan sucks. When the Transport was introduced as a concept back in 1986, it received rave reviews for its futuristic looks and features. It had the dream car appearance and feel so many consumers desired, so the Transport was given approval for production. Fast forward to 1989, when the 1990 model was officially released, and the Transport had lost all the features consumers crave, instead boasting nothing but an ugly design. Number 5, Nissan Juke. Nissan has a lot of attractive, eye-pleasing cars. The Juke is not one of them. Before we get into the model, let's just stick on the name. When you hear the word Juke, you think football, you think shifting and bypassing a defender, you think agility. Now let's look at the car. It's big, bulky, and has wide, protruding wheel arches. It also claims a high waistline, leaving its side windows small and narrow. Meanwhile, the front end has a bunch of what can only be called random, obtrusive lights. Bottom line, there's nothing agile or sleek about the Juke. Number four, Reliant Robin Mark I. The Robin, famously, has three rather than four wheels. Beyond this, there is little in the way of visual excitement to behold here. Even as far back as the 1970s, when the Mark I was first produced, the automotive world was seeing regular gains in steering technology, so we're not quite sure why three wheels seemed like a more attractive investment, but Reliant went for it. Perhaps more surprisingly, the public went for it. The Robin sold well, though that was likely a result of its fuel efficiency and an odd reduced tax and licensing loophole, which were all appealing features to a fuel short, cash-strapped UK. Number three, the Pontiac Aztec. Maybe you don't got her, Pontiac. From 2001 to 2005, 
Pontiac sold this absolute hunk of an implosion of a mid-sized crossover, billing it as a utility vehicle for the modern family. When your vehicle's big features are a removable cooler, grocery compartments, a tent, and cup holders, you know you've gone wrong. And those were on the interior. The real problems were on the exterior, where the car was too bulky, had strange plastic cladding, narrow windows, and a crazy front end. Still, it did eventually earn a welcome place in pop culture, but only thanks to meth chef Walter White, and only after the Aztec left the market. Look at that, it's just so sad. It's a sign that your life has gone terribly, yeah. terribly wrong. <laughs> Number two, the Fiat Multipla. Everyone's bound to make a mistake every once in a while, and you can make a fairly strong argument that Italian car manufacturer Fiat is among the best when it comes to producing sleek, stylish cars. Still, they couldn't escape botching at least one model, the Multipla. Where to even begin? The Multipla is a clunky, misshapen mess. Its front end looks like the bill of a duck, and the car boasts way too many lights to make sense. The design is bulky in every area, except in the back, where there's very little trunk room. We could use more words to describe the Multipla, but this is definitely one of those a picture says a thousand word scenarios. Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few dishonorable mentions. Today I'm going to show you the world's first all-wheel drive crossover convertible, the Nissan Murano Cross Cabriolet. Well, not exactly for everyone, is it? That's kind of the point. Number one, Nissan Cube. Nissan strikes out again. Almost universally considered the worst car of all time, the Cube appears exactly as its name suggests. Sold from 2009 to 2014 in the world at large, the Cube we've come to know and, well, no, was actually the third attempt, with the first two being sold in Japan only. Oddly, however, while the Cube is, and as the name implies, boxy, its designers did attempt to inject some style. Notably, it claims an asymmetric wraparound rear window. While that does break up the design a bit, it doesn't do much to overcome the whole it's a box vibe and really only amplifies the ugh factor. Seeing as most cube owners will spend their time sitting in it rather than looking at it, we'll ease ourselves in gently by starting on the inside away from all the distracting Tetris bodywork. Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from WatchMojo and subscribe for new videos every day.